Our first speaker this afternoon is Dr. Bernie Delano. But it's been going on, for, you know, many times. Mm -hmm. And um, if somebody could look that up real quick. Now, um, one thing that I want to point out uh, that's really must be said is that Yahweh really doesn't care about our physical arrangements, mm -hmm. to be honest. You know, that's not what counts. You're not taking that over. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But the only true marriage that you will take over is to be married unto Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That is the only way, and that is the only marriage that will be recognized. Mm -hmm. So, um, somebody can get that. And then uh, let's have uh, Adam and Eve. Um, basically says they came from one flesh. Mm -hmm. And now one thing uh, we do use in the school is called the tabernacle pattern. It's the most holy place holy place or roundabout. Mm -hmm. Now, this most holy place is likened unto a heavenly estate. And this is where the um, you have the uh, uh, in this most holy place without going through a whole lot. You know, you really have to come, to, first of all, you really got to come to this school and sit down and get to understand these things. Because this tabernacle pattern has it's threefold, one, two, three, yet one tabernacle pattern. You see, that's really important, important to point out. You got an original, okay? Yes. Or mixed marriage. Test it, one, two. Here we go. Uh, this is interracial marriage coming out of the Merriam Webster's Dictionary. This, what is that? What is that? Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Okay, Wikipedia. By definition. Uh, interracial marriage occurs when two people of different racial groups marry. This is often a form of exogamy, marrying outside one's social group. Exogamy. Exogamy, thank you. Yeah. And can be seen in the broader context of miscongenation, which is mixing of different racial groups or right. marriages. Co cohabitation or sexual relations. Okay, so, and then there's the opposite of exo exogamy, which is, I forget what it's called, but it's called exogamy, not, and that's exto, uh, right, there's another one. And the other one is don't mix, you see, and, you know, we got people that don't mix, and, you know, they believe in not mixing, and, you know, and then there's other effects of not mixing, you know, it's, all, it's healthier to mix than not to mix, actually, physically so. But, you know, I don't want to get off on that. But I'll touch a little bit on that as we go along. Now, this, uh, this tabernacle pattern, as I said, is a court roundabout, holy place, most holy place. Now, according to the pattern, that's where the first man, Adam and Eve, start out. And see, the first man, now, Adam is, a, is born, he's the first man born. He's the first man created, you see. And out of Adam comes Eve. Now, there was no corruption on earth. They are in a heavenly state. Whatever is created up here, says Adam was a king, because why? He named all the animals. They had fruits up there. He didn't have to plant any vineyards. They were there already. They had fruits. <clears throat> they were clothed. They, they were, it was warm. They had food to eat, because that, that's what man cares about, food, shelter, and water. Well, they had it. Okay, <laughs> so and you know who provided it for them? Yeah. Yahweh provided it for them. You see, and so and so this is now. So that's like an unto the. I was going to jump to the chick. The woman clothed in the sun. You see, that's the woman clothed in the sun. 
You see, he's married unto Yahweh. You see, that's his creator. That's all he knows. And that's all he's joined to. You see, so now, now we have here, what comes out of Adam? Let's get that, where it says uh, that, you know, she had, uh, Eve was come out of Adam. That's Genesis, I think, the second chapter, 20, maybe 24th verse. Somewhere around there. It says, uh, you know. This is, this is Exodus 2.18. Okay. And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field in their company. Yeah, where it says he is one, one flesh. Uh, that's what I heard. 23rd verse. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Yes. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's 24th verse, right? right. <laughs> so, okay. Right. So they shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. So that's what, see now, that's the way it started. And Adam was a type of the Messiah. You see, he willingly dies for his bride. You see, you have this other guy come in here. This is, this is, this is really, it's not a guy, because he's a creature. And see, all creatures, you see, we talk about in the school that everything came forth. Yahweh is pure spirit. He's inscrutable and comprehensible. He took on a shape and form, you see, or divested of his glory into a shape and form known as Yahweh Elohim, you see, which is a super incorporeal being that is the creator in a heavenly form. And see, he what? He created all things. All things come forth from him. So it comes out of the male. You see, all this creation, he's, we call him the father, right? We don't call him the mother. Right. You see? And so everything coming out of him, right, has got to go right back to him. You see? So it's, he, it came forth from him. Now it's going to what? Go back unto him. And that's what Adam is like. He's likened unto his father. Where what? He's, na he's a king too, because this is the king of kings, you see, and he's what? He's naming all these animals because he, he's the king of all the kingdoms on earth, you see, and then he also, what, you have Lucifer, now Lucifer is really a woman, you see, because all, Yahweh's likened up to the male, and all the creatures are likened up to the female. We're supposed to, what, go on to Yahshua. He's our, what, he's our husband. You see, and it's just like, and you got so many things on earth that have to work that way. I don't, you know, I know there's other marriages that people make. I'm sorry to say it, but that's just the way it is. You got to do it, you know. You, like, we are going to plug up something, and I was telling uh, John, you know, I said, look, we gotta, you got to put the male to the female right. because he had the two male ends. And I don't care how long you sit there. Right. It's not going to work. Right. You're not going to get light, right. you know. And when you see a... And it universally works. I don't care what color you are. You know, it, you have um, uh, an a, a ovum in a woman must be fertilized by what? A single sperm. You see? It has to be what? It has to get in there. It has to go in. If it doesn't go in, it's just not going to have any offspring. See? So I don't care. It, you can't take two eggs together. You can't take two sperms together. It just won't work. That's and, and I didn't make it that way. You see, so take it up with the creator. So, <laughs> so, so now, now, now here goes what? This, this is the woman. Now, see, instead of all the women should be honoring and worshiping what? Our creator. What you have a woman who wants to be worshipped. You have a woman that wants to have intercourse with another woman. That's intercoursing or what? Talking or communion. So that's not going to work. That just won't work. You see, and this, and what happens is, he comes in and causes what? Her, she was given one law, one law only, don't touch and eat. You see, in the day that you touch, you will surely die. That's Exodus, uh, I mean, Genesis 3 and 1 and 2, right? So, she takes and oh, disobeys. Now, Yash, uh, Adam is like an unto Yahshua, you see, and he what? He willingly dies for his bride, you see? That's the whole thing. Now, and the, and the thing that I want be understood here too is that Adam is like on Yahshua and Eve came out of what? Adam. You see? So now Eve or the woman has got to go what? Back to the man. You see? And that's the man. Because that was that was a divorcement there. When yeah, they had to leave what? So the day that you eat, what? You'll surely die. 
the sun goes down, which is all of a sudden they say they're in the cool of the day. The sun never went down before. All of a sudden they're, you know, they're hiding. They're naked. Oh, let's get some clothes on. Why are you naked? Because you aren't clothed in the sun anymore. <laughs> you see? So now we gotta get some clothes. We gotta cover up. You see? And so <laughs> so you have here them having to be what? Expelled or driven out of the garden, which is Genesis 3.24. So and then what? He has to till from the ground until they be saved by what? Childbearing. You see? They gotta bear forth children. So again, doesn't matter what color you are, and, and you know, when you look at color, you know, Adam was, I'm just going to touch on this real quick, Adam was made from what? The dust of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I believe that's a dirt. Mm -hmm. So, now, you got all kinds of different colored dirt. Mm -hmm. You got all kinds of different colored dirt. Mm -hmm. So, you got white dirt, you got brown dirt, you got red dirt, you got different shades of all that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just go by, now, you just look at people, it's the same way. They made all different kinds of shades and colors. So, you know, and you know, if you take light, and Yahweh, he doesn't possess light, he is light, right. you see? And when you shine it through, uh, run it through a prism, it does what? It makes a whole lot of colors, doesn't it? And you can mix those colors to make more colors. Right. So it goes like really infinite. So, uh, and then, you see like, man has to be saved by childbearing. And you see he's down here, he's uh, by the sweat of his brow, that's uh, water, and then what, blood or death has been passed upon all mankind. You see death, uh, blood, water, and then what, they're waiting for the spirit of Yahshua to come back. And this is what it says, crucifixion, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yahshua. Now you're going to go, but what, you're going to get married back to Yahshua, you see? You're, good, you're divorced from the spirit. You're divorced from the spirit. Now you've got to get what? You see, you've got to get back into being married to the spirit. And that's and that's the whole thing. Now, all these things that take place from here on is carnal, carnal Romans 8 and 6. Because that's what happened. He became mankind, became carnal. So all these things about people worrying about, oh, should I marry this? Should I marry that? Well, you know what? You marry Yahshua, and that's what you really that's what we all need to focus on. You see, is being married to Yahshua. Now, that's a whole other we're gonna go through a little bit of that too. But this, this is why you know a lot of this. This is Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded. So, and that, this is what we want to It's See, everybody's got their eyes on the flesh and looking at the flesh and how important the flesh is. I don't care how, you could be uh, male, female, or whatever. You could be whatever you say you are and you love each other. You're going to have fights. You're going to have wars. You're going to have, look, if everybody was like, had it together, oh, I want to get married. To, to so and so, and then why are these all these divorces out there? You know, I guess people aren't getting along. You know, <laughs> so you know what people have to. I guess what it, where the where the key really is is in the mind. You see, so now we're talking here to be carnally minded is death. Now that's up to you. The thing means is carnal is physical minded. You see, and this is called carnal ordinances. You see, in the carnal, which means physical ordinances. And they were given to the Jews and Jews only. It wasn't given to nobody else. You see, and Yahshua gave him this, gave him this uh, uh, covenant to follow. You see, because he has a pattern, a purpose, and a plan. And he's bringing mankind right back to him. To be, what? In that heavenly estate again. Be married with him. In the spirit. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. Because the carnal mind is enemy against Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can be. Right. And let me have Romans 5 and 12. Because <clears throat> I want to show, you know, again, you know, what's going on here. Romans 5 and 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and sin by death, and so death passed upon all men. Some men. All mm -hmm. men. So, uh, so again, here we're back at, you know, people are focusing on our color. Color does not, is not anything that is going to, you know, get the speaker down a little bit. I think that's what we have to do. So color isn't something that is going to, um, that's not what Yahweh cares. Yahweh doesn't care about your color. Right. You know, he doesn't care about what what you know you you what you are. You're African. 
you're, you're German, you're, you know, whatever it may be, you're, you're Trinidadian, he doesn't really, he doesn't care. He can care less. <coughs> what he does care is, do you know him? Mm -hmm. You see, that's what he cares about. And if you don't know him, you know, when you get married to somebody, well, let's, I get it, you've got to know them. You should know them at least. He's one hour. Uh, I met them. Yeah, I knew him for an hour when I was married. Okay, yeah, we're gonna know that last. Now it might happen once in a great while, but you know, hey, for the most part, you better know who you married. Go ahead. What was it? What? Yeah. This is John 17 and 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah who thou would say. See? That's life eternal. That's what we're after. Life eternal. Because you know why? The flesh don't last forever. That's why. So you gotta have something that's gonna last forever. A lasting relationship. You see? Go ahead. Okay, 17 and 4. I have glorified thee on the earth, and I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. Now, O Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory which I have had with thee before the world was. Oh. So, now I also want to get to uh, eat. Uh, see, Yahweh is, it said, let's have uh, Exodus 24 and 7. Now, another thing, I mean, there's so much to go by. And I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to <laughs> stay focused. So... Exodus 24 and 7. Mm -hmm. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. Now this is what I was talking about. Yahweh, you know, had man was, was looking for one to be born that would redeem them. You see, and as time went along, you had what? Uh, uh, man got wicked. It says man's uh, by the time of Noah, it says man's what? Thoughts were only uh, thoughts. Again, here we are with thoughts. Were only evil continually. To who? Themselves? No, to Yahweh. Because he's the one that counts. <laughs> you see, they could be evil all they want with themselves. But see, when it came up to Yahweh, no, you're too evil. i got to get rid of you. That's how I'm clean, clean up this earth. And so, now they get it by divine vision revelation. So all these things, I've read so many different kinds of stuff about, oh, this race before this, and this race in here. And that. You know what? You see this flood? This flood covered the earth by 20 uh, furlongs, about a mile and a half over the tallest mountain. No flesh survived except that which is in there, okay? And they all weren't of uh, one color. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. I don't hate to say that, I like to say that, but that's the truth. You see, I want to say the truth, you see? So, you know, you go ahead and make whatever you want because all the other nations came, what, forth from these guys right here, you see? So, you know, first you had it from Adam, now you got it from Noah. And, and what, the eight souls that were on that ark, that's what it was. So they came over, and they, what, populated. And look, you got this rainbow coming, a promise. A promise to what? That everything that, what, won't be flooded again, you see. But now, you see, so now you have what? All these things come forth. You have the Abrahamic promise come forth. He says what? To Abraham, in thy seed, what? All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Then say only a certain race, you see, only a certain kind, only a certain religion. It said, all the families of the earth shall be blessed, you see. So that's what Yahweh, he's looking at you, he's looking at your soul, you see. Don't be deceived, you see, there is a deceiver here, and he just wants to be worshipped. You know, look at me, look at me. And see, and that's where, what, we aren't going to make that Passover. You see, just like Noah, he listened to that divine vision revelation that was given by Yahweh. That was his Passover, you see, to the next, to the next world. And we want our path. We're going to leave this flesh. We want the Passover to the next world. So, anyway, uh, where was I? Exodus 24 and 7. Okay. Okay, and he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, all that Yahweh say, we will do and be obedient. Right, so they, these children of Israel, so that Abraham had promised Abraham when was told he, this he would go down to land they know not of, the evil and tree, and come out with great substance and inherit a land felt flowing with milk and honey. I just did the migration like really fast. So, <laughs> so now when they get out here, when after they leave the what the plague stricken land of Egypt, the Yahweh, what his name was declared upon. You see, and overthrew Pharaoh and his host because they served other gods. You see, they served something else. And see, and, and see, that's the thing that Yahweh does. He doesn't like that. And um, 
See, now they were what? Because of that, they had to cut all these deities down there. Yahweh didn't want them. his Israel married to them. He wants to be married to them. And that's why they need to come out because there's two... Let me see if I can lower this even more. Okay, how's that? Better? <laughs> okay, so now he wants... He wants to be married. I mean, he wants he wants your attention. You don't want to be married to somebody and then they're over there. Hey, uh, you know, so and so. You know, <laughs> you know this this three this three way love affair doesn't work. You see, <laughs> that that can't go. So it's it's you know has to be between what the creature and the owl. And so he and see since Pharaoh was a chief guy there, he had ices and horse and all them. You see, they had to be, what, overthrown. Now, before they leave this place, certain land of Egypt, they had to, what, be saved by the blood of the lamb. That's what they had to do, take out a lamb. That lamb was testifying to Yahshua Messiah. Yahshua Messiah said, look, I've come to fulfill the scriptures. I've come, uh, they testified to me, and the scriptures were the law and the prophets. So, you know, Yahweh says, what, take them out of the land of Egypt, and, and see, they have to take out a, blood, uh, a lamb without spot, without blemish, male the first year, they can't break a bone. All those are things that what Yashin Messiah, point to Yashin Messiah. This is a type and shadow, he's a reality. Our marriages are a type and shadow, he's, the reality is the marriage with him, you see. So now they have to come through what? That's a death of the, the lamb. A burial, they go through the Red Sea. That's 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. And it's in Exodus 23, 23. You see that angel that's with them that has to what keep them in the way. It says, obey his voice. You see, for he will not pardon your transgressions. And so they go out here to the what? The wilderness of Sinai. They come up here, they get married. And that's where we just read. They said, all Yahweh said, we will do. And that's what you do when you get married. Don't you say, do you take this person? I do. Well, there was many of them constituted one body. But they said, we will, you see. So that was their acceptance of the covenant. So let's have Jeremiah 31, 31. And see what Yahweh's doing through time, you know, there's three ages of time. Everything goes three according to this pattern. Just like you got this, what, this Egypt, wilderness, and then Canaan land, the promised land. You got land, sea, and air, you know, uh, blood, water, spirit, you see? Death, burial, resurrection. Okay, and there's many other examples. Go ahead. This is Deuteronomy 31, 31. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jeremiah. Sorry. Jeremiah, yeah. Deuteronomy 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, and I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, mm -hmm. not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them up out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith oh. Yahweh. He was a husband unto them. You see? And that's the thing. Yahweh is our husband. You see? Is there more to that? But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. That I will put my law in their inward heart, and I will write in their hearts, and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Okay. So we see that, you know, let's have uh, James 5 and 7. And I had, like, I, pro I just barely touched upon the things that I actually had here. I just scratched them because, <laughs> because really, you know, I didn't even get into, you know, Yashua saving the soul, <laughs> you know. This is James 5 and 7. <clears throat> Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of Yahweh. Behold, thy husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received an earthly and later rain. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, uh, you know, Yahweh is, is our husband man. And, you know, through Yahshua the Messiah, you're going you're gonna to have to come in through Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And let's have 1 Corinthians 15. It says, so in the natural body, he talks about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's get that. And then I want after that Colossians 1.26. Mm -hmm. So... This is 1 Corinthians 15, 44. Mm -hmm. It is sown a natural body. It so, is 
See, it's sown in that, it was began a natural body. Go ahead. It has raised the spiritual body. If Yahshua deemed it so. <laughs> so just like he took these 12 apostles, he said, what? Yeah, I chose you, you didn't choose me. Okay, go ahead. It is sown a natural. It, uh, excuse me. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Don't get the two confused. <laughs> One's a type and shadow of the other. You know, go ahead. So it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. Mm -hmm. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So right, the last man Adam. Now who is the last man Adam? That's Yahshua the Messiah. He's a quickening spirit. But what he's quickening is your soul. Mm -hmm. You see, he just like that ovum needs to have that sperm penetrated so it can be quickened and bring, bring forth some life and offspring. Well, Yahshua has to what? He has to penetrate our souls, you see, and then he has to what? We get, he's a quickening spirit, so he, what? Alights and illuminates him concerning his pattern, purpose, and plan. And there's so much more to go through. You really have to come to this class and you have to see, you know, and sit down. It's only two hours. You're learning about the pattern. Yahweh's been dealing with the physical creation for 6,000 years. There's a lot to catch up on here for us, you know, but he does break it down to us. Galatians 5.21, please. Okay, See? Because one thing, now you have a woman and a man, they come together, there's what? Offspring to that, right? You see? And this is and this is what he's quickening. This whole thing with this children, migration of children of Israel is really, it's, it's, it's pointing out the resurrection of the soul. Coming from darkness of the, their creator into light and illumination. And then finally what? Going past or taking off the veil of the flesh or their flesh and tire of mind, falling off and then being what? Placed back into a heavenly state. Because up here they had houses and giant fruit. You see? And so now that's what Yahshua, by what? Intercoursing with Yahshua, the true marriage, that's what you're going to get. You see? Go, and this, these are the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, mm -hmm. peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. They're, they're right. So those are the fruits of the spirit, you see. And we don't want the fruits of the, or the lust of the flesh and the works of the flesh, you see. And that's why they had, these are called works under the law. They couldn't keep that first covenant. Yahshua had to what? Divorce them from this first covenant, as I said before, and usher them into the new covenant, you see. And he's cleaning up your soul. He's converting your soul. That Psalms 19 and 7, which we won't get, says the law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. You see, and when you have that conversion, that, I mean, that you get that fruit, you get that, that fruit that comes forth. And that's, you know, and it's also what? Peace, joy, and righteousness in the kingdom. That's what the kingdom is, you know? Peace, joy, and righteousness in Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what he's delivering to us. And I hope you got something out of that. Uh, peace and love, Yahshua. Amen.